Hello, folks. Thanks for joining us again. Uh, today we have a special guest, Dr. Jacques Marcos from University of Miami. He's one of the most amazing teachers and superb surgeons I've ever worked with. He's going to talk to us about techniques for complex bypass um, procedures, especially related to cerebral aneurysms. He's going to start his talk with a series of slides followed by three detailed videos. Jacques, thanks again for joining us, and please go ahead. Thank you, Aaron. Again, it's a wonderful pleasure to join you for this webinar this evening, and uh, um, I will be talking about bypass techniques for complex aneurysms. As uh, Aaron, you well know, you and I did a webinar before discussing bypass technique for STA, MCA, aneurysm in which I discussed general principles of bypass surgery, which I will not repeat here, so I will carry it, carry it from here onwards. Um, I'd like to remind people that there are several types of bypass. Uh, I, I, I put this table together to try to uh, summarize all the types of bypasses one can create, and you can see that's a two by three table. If on the left we uh, write down the type of donor we're using, and in the columns section we put the number of anastomoses, either one or more than one, we can categorize really all existing bypasses. Uh, and you can see here, I will not go in each detail, that they can be in situ bypasses, short grafts, long grafts, and the STA, MCA, or occipital artery to pica. Here, of course, there is no such bypass because you cannot create a bypass from a distant extracranial uh, donor site with only one anastomosis. So tonight, I will this show three videos, one for in situ, one for short graft, and one for long graft bypass. Uh, these uh, grafts, as you, uh, we all know, the STA is the most versatile uh, uh, donor we can have. It is not always low flow. It can be quite high flow, and low flow uh, designation is a misnomer. You can use it for double barrel bypasses. The saphenous vein graft uh, is a excellent conduit. There is an issue of the valves in the vein. There is an issue whether you keep it in situ or whether you reverse the graft. Uh, when I use it, I do not reverse, I do not create a valvotomy. I keep the valves in situ so as not to disrupt the endothelium. Uh, and I generally uh, have it taken endoscopically from the thigh rather than make a long incision. Uh, but the long-term pitancy of vein bypasses uh, is uh, definitely slightly lower than the radial artery bypasses here which are generally medium in size. They are the ideal caliber match and suturability of most intracranial vessels, but they are limited in length to about 23 centimeter. And you have to certainly do an Allen test to uh, document that they are not essential to the circulation of the hand. They can go into spasm post-op, and of course there is a forearm scar. How to, do we tunnel? Uh, grafts, I generally use pre-auricular subcutaneous tunnel using 28 French chest tube using the blunt end of the chest tube first to avoid seventh nerve peripheral injury at the parotid gland. I don't like the post-auricular tunneling and I generally don't use the transmiddle fossa floor uh, tunneling and of course the bonnet contralateral bypass is a very rare scenario. Which anastomosis to do first? Generally, the intracranial anastomosis is best done first. That's usually the more difficult of the two and the limiting one to the length of the graft. And generally, when more than one anastomosis is done, it is essential to strategize so that the least ischemia is incurred on the intracranial circulation. Uh, there are lots of details about the geometry, the angulation, the conformality of an anastomosis. Again, too many details to discuss in this present webinar, but uh, suffice